Hi, my name is uh, Zbigniew Doroszkiewicz, short ZB Doros. I am from Europe and uh, I came over here about 25, 26 years ago. This three-dimensional idea of mandala comes from my grand-grandfather. He was of obviously playing with the mandalas two-dimensional all the time, but he tried to do it with the wire and uh, then through the grandfather to the father, then come to me and I create this changing the structure that is fully movable and three-dimensional. It is mandala. Mandala cells means uh, it's a symbol of universe, symbol of life, connections between us and the entire universe, of course. Since I was trying to patent it to be sure that nobody gonna copy me, I tried to do it myself simply because financial reason, but it uh, was very hard because not only my English is not perfect, but the patent language is very complicated. My name is Josie Grant and I'm a muralist in San Francisco. I'm also a member of the Street Artists Advisory Board and I give the licenses to the street artists in San Francisco. The process is so convoluted that try as we may, going through the patent office in Washington, going to their business helpline, getting professional help was not enough. So I knew that I had to find some attorney and I couldn't financially afford to do that. My name is Scott Bajunas. I'm a director in the patent development group supporting the enterprise group right now. I've been with the company for about six years. I did some pro bono work previously for veterans, in particular the combat-related special compensation program. I've also been pretty involved with street law at the Herndon site. My colleague Gail Sue had been exploring ways to get patent attorneys more involved in pro bono, and actually she launched this program internally, working with California Lawyers for the Arts. My name is Gail Sue. I joined HP five years ago uh, as part of the IP Transactions and Counseling Group. Oftentimes when you think about pro bono, you think about things like housing clinics, going to court, you know, lawyer for a day, and things like that. Um, and for those of us who are patent attorneys, sometimes that puts us way out of our comfort zone. So a couple years ago, what we decided to do was we tried to find a pro bono experience that would be more relevant to the skill sets that patent attorneys have. Around the time when we started thinking about this a couple years ago, the American Events Act came out. Um, the American Events Act had a section in it that basically said the director of the USPTO will help various regional pro bono offices to establish some sort of a patent pro bono program. So HPE was very fortunate to become part of this program, uh, one of the pioneer programs with the Northern California district. So I signed up for a case through Gail and decided to represent an independent inventor. When I had an initial call with ZB, he was really, I think, frustrated with the process. The word he used was disheartened. He had spent several years working with the patent office trying to get his application allowed, but I think the formalities of the process, the technicalities of the process, made it very challenging for him. And I think he'd given up on his invention when he came to us. All the time from the patent office, when I send the uh, applications and papers, all the time was coming back something that it's okay, but you have to change this. Or it's okay, you have to change the entire section. Or it's okay, but we don't understand that and that and that. It's very technical and it's very legal at the same time. So there's a lot of formalities. You need to understand the specific rules the patent office has. And I think that's really difficult for a lay person. So one of the keys to getting this case back on track was to go into the patent office in Alexandria, sit down with the examiner, sit down with her supervisor, and it sort of explain the case, explain how the invention worked, explain some of the challenges EB had faced, and really set the context. And I think once we had that interview with the examiner, it really got the case back on track. Existence of the patent itself is just to protect the person to Nobody can copy me, and then I can actually open myself to the bigger market. And that's uh, what I'm doing right now. How much are these? Uh, to finally get this patent allowed, I think was, he told us really a life-changing thing for him. 
Since the two years that I've been running the program, um, we've had over 20 cases that we've managed, um, 10 of which resulted in applications, another 10 of which we helped the inventor basically understand that there was no patentable invention there and they were able to save a lot of time, heartache, and money. Um, and in the 21 cases, we had something like 40 different people from OGC, both attorneys and non-attorneys, help with those cases. I, I think it's a great program um, because I, I think it kind of gets down to the heart of what I think all patent attorneys love to do, right? Um, they love innovation, they love inventions, they love inventors. There's a tendency, I think, for lawyers over time to start to take their skills for granted. We spend years in law school, years on the job learning these very specific technical skills, and it becomes easy, I think, to forget how difficult and how inaccessible the legal system can be to people that don't have our training. So I think we as lawyers have a duty to use our technical training, our legal training, to get involved and to give back to the community. So after almost three years of battle, Scott created patent for me. If it wasn't for Scott and Daniel at HP, it, this would not have happened and we are like, you know, ever so grateful for their ability and their positive attitude and being helpful and that they were able to accomplish it so quickly. Mm -hmm.